Um, got the first two rows done. And this is less than half of them. I'm crazy. Um, but I just want to show you kind of how we do it. There's, they're planted um, very deep um, so that they can grow roots out of the stem and um, build up a strong root system faster than they otherwise would. My tomato map. Not wet. So now we have this set up. We've got two cattle vanels um, in a row here. So that each one is in a roughly 30 to 32 feet. Um, they overlap a little in the middle. The cattle panels are about 16 feet. And so our tomatoes, we have eight tomatoes in each row. This gives them plenty of room to spread out across this whole area and not be like too crowded. And uh, tomatoes like airflow. So we trellis them kind of on these like flat against the cattle panel and then the air flows between the rows and they're not too um, crowded or anything. You can see some of these sad bottom leaves of these plants. This is probably the latest we've ever planted out tomatoes. It's crazy. It's just, we had a frost last week and you know we're planting all these other things. We've also got peppers in now. These are jalapenos and other spicy peppers. There's more there's some ghost peppers over there. This, all of this um, is basil and it's not the happiest basil ever, but I think it's going to get better. It's not really fond of the cool weather. This is all lime basil, so it's kind of supposed to be that color, but this, is, this should be greener. But I think it'll get there. It's over watered right now. Um, all of those little holes over there are bush beans. Um, they should be coming up any day. I just planted the sage yesterday. There's a bunch of sage in there. With those weeds are all, are all pulled, so they're not gonna be too bad. And this is all um, creeping thyme. So I'm hoping this will make a big sage patch next to the thyme. This is my sweet pepper bed. Bell peppers. Other sweet peppers in there. And then I'm gonna come over here. I just added all of this, not this, this pepper bed had weed fabric, but I just added all of this recently um, and we're redoing our tunnel. Um, this is one sixth of the tunnel um, and we're going to do two tunnels. So it'll go like that and then there's a spot, you can see the holes here, it'll go again and they'll go three cattle panels back from there. Just to show you some other things we've got going on right now on the farm, we've got these tractors right outside our house with meat chickens in them. I believe that we have 23 left. We have a, that one doesn't have any water, goodness. We had some, uh, some kind of pneumonia go through and kill several of them, but the rest of them seem to be doing better and they're getting kind of huge. They're about a month old or four weeks. This is our other uh, tomato area, tomato expansion area. Teddy, put it back in the hole, bud. Okay, so Teddy's planting tomatoes. It's broken? Uh oh. Um, let me check it. Oh crap. Teddy broke a tomato plant. Um, cutting weeds. You're cutting weeds? Yeah. How helpful. Bentley, what are you doing? Uh, standing here. Again, how helpful. What should are, I do? These are our onions. Aren't they big? And the garlic is in the back. It's even bigger. I just planted um green beans green pole beans all along the fence and then we did dry beans in the teepee over there uh, and last year we did green beans in the teepee and dry beans on the fence which the fence works great and is better for harvesting so as you can see the teepee is pretty tall it's probably not a good idea teddy cut a piece wood off cut a piece of wood off yeah. Okay. Why don't you put the scissors down? No, or... Daddy, want me okay, so we're there's five Samarzanos there. I'm working on five more in this mess right by our chickens. And uh, this will be all these are all San Marzanos, so this will be sauce tomatoes. Last year I did this as 
Um, this was all cherry tomatoes. And that was way too many cherry tomatoes. Mm -hmm. You've got mud on your glasses. What? You've got mud on your glasses. We're here. Oh, what did you find, Teddy? A worm. A worm. Yeah, I was actually going to show you guys these worms. Look at this. Look how many worms we have. So when we first made this area for our tomatoes in our yard, which was last year, we put down um, a thick layer of hay um, from our goat um, houses. And get in there, worms. And we... Um, yeah, they're just and everywhere. Anyway, we put a thick layer of hay from our goat houses, and, and it has all um, composted now for the most part. Let's see what's under here. No, there's some weeds trying to come up, but you can see there's a little bit of hay left, but it was like eight inches of hay. So all that is composted and made for a very happy environment for worms. And, um, Hopefully, happy soil for our tomatoes. Okay, just take it back to the greenhouse. All right, so all of our yard tomatoes are in. Okay, well, he's tired. Um, and also mad because his brother picked a strawberry and didn't get one for him. So we're walking back to the greenhouse in the garden. We'll, uh, yeah. Speaking of strawberries, look at this. This is crazy town over here. Crazy strawberry town. They're huge. These plants are huge, and I have no idea how we're ever going to even find all the strawberries because our aisles are pretty much gone. But hey, there's a lot of berries. The birds are finding them, though. Our greens over here, the kale's doing good. Um, we've got some peas and cilantro and that. Then these other greens, the bok choy and the um, mustard greens have bolted, but we're gonna save some seed from them. Got some more kale over here. This is walking stick kale. This is mostly full of radishes and the cats like to dig in it. Yeah, I'm talking to you, Lucy. Um, we've also got, we've got lettuce here that is uh, really yummy. It probably needs to be cut again. And um, those are our carrots, which are pretty crowded, but I think they can handle it out here all these tomatoes the basil the peppers so now the summer squash the basil the peppers the tomatoes are all in the herb garden is filled out um the beans are all in what's left guys oh winter squash yep the the uh, other tunnels still need to go in the winter squash and the cucumbers still need to go in um and we've been battling cucumber beetles like crazy today on our summer squash plants so we'll see i'm hoping on the cucumber beetles since we caught them early like super early like i planted the plants like three days ago and they were already covered um i think that they're just adults that either flew in or overwintered here because we are not so good about rotating crops or any of that as you saw with me planting my tomatoes in the same place they were last year um so i covered all of the plants in a coating of um something called around wp it's like a it's a clay product i cannot remember the name anyway it uh it confuses the bugs and keeps them from eating the plants the idea is that if you keep it on there, um, they won't eat them and they will move on to uh, other places. And these are striped cucumber beetles, so they don't eat other things that we are growing besides the squash and cucumbers and all of the things in that family. Okay, so I mean, this is what it looks like with this around WP. Uh, you mix this powder with, guys, with a liquid, um, with water and then spray it on to coat the leaves. It's like, it also is supposed to help with uh, like fungus and other things. I'm not really sure it's gonna work because it's supposed to rain every day this week, but we're really trying anyway. And actually I don't see any cucumber beetles out here for the first time today. I've been just seeing them like all over the plants. That's horrible. I also pruned these plants. So. I uh, cut off most of the leaves that were like laying on the ground because that's the ones they were eating. 
I figured if they were up higher that might help. And uh, I don't know why, because they can fly, but it could help. Um, and I put this hay here because we needed a little mulch to cover a crack in the weed fabric. And the internet said the hay would attract or draw or whatever, any kind of mulch would attract um, wolf spiders, which I know we have, but it gives them some coverage so they, and they hunt the cucumber beetles. So this area over here is um, pollinator bed. I kind of want to put more in, but I'm, I'm holding back. Look at all these tomatoes. It's so exciting. Okay, the tunnels are up and planted. So that's uh, pretty much it for the update right now. Um, we have a couple more weeks in May. We're hoping to get everything planted that's meant to be planted in May. The next two weekends we're doing more baby goat and bunny play dates. Uh, actually, I will show you the bunnies in here. That's the mama bunny, the blackberry. But look at this, aren't they adorable? So they're just starting to open their eyes. And then we'll be cuddling them this week, playing with them. Look how cute. There's some really cute brown ones this time. Look at this, it's adorable. Um, so we'll be playing with these little guys in the next week to get them used to it. And then, so the play dates we'll be having, um, the next two weekends will be with our tiny new bunnies and with our um, couple month old Angora rabbits too because they're fluffy and cute. Anyway, so there's our hutch where our babies live. The rest of the rabbits are all out in the blackberry patch, eating grass. I'm trying to be like more tolerant of the garden cats this year since obviously if you look at this garden, they're not gonna dig anything up. There's no dirt. So they're not going to dig and poop in my garden, which is really bad, obviously. Um, but I'm hoping, despite the fact that he's just laying there asleep now, that they're going to keep the birds out of the strawberries, because that has been a major problem already. We're losing a lot of berries to birds. I want to put some kind of netting over them. I've got floating row covers that would really do well for keeping birds off them, but it would also keep the pollinators out and there are tons of flowers on them still. So I either need to buy some bird netting and drape it over all this and then have to take it off three times a day when we come pick strawberries, or I'm hoping the cats will just kind of hang out here. It could happen, right? Okay, one more look at the tomatoes because I'm super excited that they're all in and the peppers and the squash and the little pollinator area. Like, such a good feeling having the garden all up and going.